We just got a huge trade in the NBA. A Woj bomb just dropped. It is 6.53 p.m. on June 28th, and we are reacting to it. As you guys can see, DeJounte Murray is headed to New Orleans to team up with Brandon Ingram, Zion Williamson, CJ McCollum, and all of a sudden, the Pelicans are contenders. They were kind of in this weird spot where like, they're gonna make the playoffs, but like, I don't know if that core of Zion BI and CJ McCollum is enough to get it done. Of course, they have the solid pieces on the outside, like Herb Jones, Trey Murphy, Jose Alvarado, but you got DeJounte Murray, and they didn't even have to give up Brandon Ingram, who is rumored to possibly be traded. Now, we all know DeJounte Murray with the Hawks didn't work out. DeJounte Murray, Trey Young, that experiment, it didn't work out. It was kind of weird, too. I remember when it happened, like, obviously the Hawks of Trey Young, that's like their franchise player, and they went out and got DeJounte Murray. And when it happened, I remember Twitter exploded. Everyone was like, what are they doing? They're getting a second point guard. They tried to make them work alongside each other. And it really didn't work. We even saw at times like when Trey Young went down, DeJounte Murray would step up big time. He had a few game winners. When DeJounte Murray would go down, Trey Young would step up. And it was like, but when they were together, it really wasn't working out having those two guards there. So it's been rumored for a while now that one of them will be traded. Maybe it's Trey Young going to San Antonio. Maybe it's DeJounte going wherever. But now we have the answer. DeJounte Murray to the Pelicans. And you guys might be wondering, what did they give up? Now, first, before we actually get into what they gave up, uh, what had dropped was this, which is not the full trade. Underdog, I believe Sham, someone else tweeted out this. DeJounte Murray for two first round picks and Larry Nance Jr., who, by the way, is not on a great contract. For a player that's not that good, you know, he's kind of a, you know, end of the rotation type guy. He's making like 11 million. I think he has either one or two years left in his deal. Really not a good contract. But basically, the full deal is... The full deal with the details is DeJounte Murray for Larry Nance Jr. and Dyson Daniels. So that's a big piece because without him being in the deal, it was just so weak. So they're getting the 2025 first round pick via the Lakers and the 2027 first round pick, which either which whichever is least favorable of the Bucks or the Pelicans because the Pelicans have two first round picks. So I don't know. I mean, the Hawks had to get rid of him. I mean, you didn't. You don't have to, but like it was obvious they were going to. I feel like they could have got more. If you guys don't know, DeJounte Murray has a four year deal. So it's not like he was in the last year of his deal and they were just trying to ship him off before he left in free agency. DeJounte Murray has a four year contract. And so now he's teaming up with the Pelicans, which if we pull up their depth chart, let me just show you guys like that. We'll just go like that for now, bang. CJ McCollum is now going to slide down. I feel like he's not a true point guard. I, it's not a feeling. He just isn't. He's not a true point guard. This is a team similar to the Suns that I feel like needed kind of a true point guard. Like Bradley Beal wasn't really it. We saw Devin Booker, you know, playing point guard. Just not it. So now, you know, you're going to slot DeJounte Murray in here. And I haven't even looked at this. So it'll be DeJounte Murray, CJ McCollum, Brandon Ingram, and Zion. And then the five, I guess, will be... Uh, Valanchunas for now we'll see what they do about that maybe they can bring in a center in free agency I don't know we'll see but wow I mean this bench is going to be crazy so they got rid of Dyson Daniels who does have some upside that's the biggest piece to me not Larry Nance I think Dyson Daniels only has one year left I think he has two but it's a club option either one or two years left there but now Trey Murphy and Herb Jones are going to be coming off the bench with Jose Alvarado. I mean, this is one of the deepest teams in the league because, I mean, Jose Alvarado isn't a starter level player, but he's a great bench guy. Trey Murphy and Herb Jones are two guys that can start, in my opinion, on like championship caliber teams. Like they're obviously gonna be the fourth or fifth best player in the starting lineup on a championship team, but they can start, you know what I mean? They are that good. And now they're coming off the bench, I assume. I assume, I mean, would they would they run Zion at the five? Like, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, I'm sure they're gonna have some lineups that do that, but this is now all of a sudden one of the most deep teams in the entire Western Conference. Of course, you got the Denver Nuggets, which we can't even really look at this because they don't have a full roster, and I don't know why it looks like this. They got 
I mean, wow. Yeah, let's just get off of that. I don't know what that was. Uh, ESPN apparently thinks that the Nuggets only have two positions this year. Point, uh, power forward and center. So we're going to get off that. But yeah, this is a raw reaction video. I don't know if you guys enjoy these. If you guys are new around here, make sure to sub up because I'm a 2K YouTuber, of course. But I'm getting into the NBA space and post videos since December. So we're going to keep on grinding out on this channel. It's a passion, you know, of mine. So I'm going to keep on dropping reactions, predictions, all that all year. Um, but let's see what else we got. Woj continues to drop tweets. New Orleans was 0-24 when trailing, entering the fourth, and 2-14 and in close games. And seeing Murray as a player who can generate offense late in games, he's he's a clutch player. I would say top 10 clutch players in the NBA. I mean, we saw it last year. He had a ton of clutch moments. Pels remain committed to the court. That includes Zion Williamson and CJ McCollum. Pels are trying to find common ground with Brandon Ingram's contract. Okay, so I mean, maybe there's a chance that B.I., you know, is gone. Maybe there is a chance B.I. is gone. And then that makes it a more interesting, you know, Herb Jones potentially stays a starter. Um, but I thought, you know, you trade for DeJounte Murray, B.I. is going to be in that trade. They found a way to trade him or to trade for DeJounte without giving up B.I. I don't know how they did that, because if I'm the Hawks, you got to be asking for Brandon Ingram. And of course, here's the updated depth chart. So they have, you know, Murray, Alvarado, McCollum with Jordan Hawkins. I didn't even mention him. He's going to be pretty good. Brandon Ingram, who potentially will leave where, you know, you either have Herb Jones or Trey Murphy slide into that lineup. It doesn't even matter which one it is. Jonas, who I think still has to sign. I think he's a free agent. Uh, so yeah, they're going to need a center still. I don't think Zion can really run at the five, maybe a few minutes per game, but like, you know. Uh, the Hawks are ending the Murray Trey Young experiments, bringing on promising young wing in Dyson Daniels and getting a pick in the deep 2025 draft. Landry Fields uh, knew the Hawks had to make a move in the backcourt. And there's and honestly, I don't hate this because Dyson Daniels has upside. Like, I think he could be a solid player. We have to see how he completely pans out. But now you're getting two first round picks given they're probably going to be late first with, you know, it's going to be the Lakers and then either the Bucks or Pelicans. And now the Pelicans look really good. So it'll probably be two picks that are like in the 20s, but still it's first round picks. Whether you want to trade those or whatever, you brought in Dyson Daniels, you got rid of Jonte Murray. I still feel like they could have got a little bit more. It feels like kind of a small haul there. Um, let's see what else was tweeted about this. The Pelicans, okay, we already read that. Uh, but yeah, first it was looking like it was just Larry Nance and two first. I'm like, let's see some of the reactions. Like everyone was like, yeah, Pelicans got a steal. What? Pelicans fleece. That's a steal. That was my reaction. And then shortly after, they of course said Dyson Daniels was added, in, which is a big, you know, factor. So let me see real quick if there's anything else on this topic, but I'm going to get this video out for y'all as quick as possible. Looks like there's nothing else. If you guys haven't, by the way, make sure to follow me on Twitter. I feel like most of my followers are from 2K, of course, but I tweet out about the, that's pretty much all I tweet out about is the NBA. So if you guys want to see you know, tweets about the NBA. Make sure to follow me, turn on noties. But this is interesting. This is interesting. The Pelicans all of a sudden are up there in the upper tier of teams in the West. You know, I thought the Thunder were making great moves and they might be my favorite in the West right now. Of course, the Nuggets are going to be in that mix, Timberwolves. But all of a sudden, the Pelicans are in that top four or five. Also, the Mavericks. But things are getting interesting in the NBA. And this is not the end. We have a lot of crazy things coming up in the next few days.